Hey everyone, this is Monique, AKA the Esoteric Diviner. And today's journey moment, I wanna talk about what to do when you don't know your ancestors. I get this question a lot. And so I thought I'd kind of uh, share that process with you. So first and foremost, usually people are going to fall in one of three categories when they're having a conversation about getting to know their ancestors or how they come to me. The first one is you have um, cut some type of familial ties. Maybe you and your mother don't have a good relationship or you and your father don't have a good relationship. And so because of that, you've cut ties and that also has cut ties with the information that you can receive about your family. The second group of people are those who maybe you have no living relatives or no living elders and so therefore you have no ability to get that information from them maybe you even know some ancestors that have passed but you have absolutely no information about them so that's the second group of people the third group of people are going to be people that are adopted and maybe they've been looking for their biological parents or family, but they haven't been able to have that happen. I believe that ancestors are really the way, the truth, and the light. I hate to uh, kind of repurpose that phrase, but I really do believe that. And so we cannot really fully live into our purpose. Yes, we may be able to be prosperous and have a great job. Yes, we may be able to have a beautiful, beautiful family, but this is not about manifestations. This is about you connecting with your inner self so that you can achieve what is for your purpose. And so therefore, it's very challenging for you to move forward without having some type of connection with the other side. So I'm going to talk about the adopted process last. But let me talk to you first about uh, maybe you don't know your family because you felt the need to cut familial ties. I have been in that exact same situation. But what I really had to understand is that if my destiny, if my ability to live into my purpose is going to happen through my relationship with this person, then it's, it's not a it's not a choice. It's something that I have to do because I can't be able to move forward if I have no connection with my lineage. Remember a couple of days ago, I said the Yoruba uh, uh, to life is your lineage, your bloodline, your destiny. No connection with your lineage, no connection with your bloodline, far connection from your destiny. And so if you want to be able to really live into your purpose, it's time. You got to cut those ties. You got to try to reach out because it's too important. The second group of people are those people, maybe you have no living elders, maybe you're not connected to your extended family. And so therefore you, again, have no ability to figure out who your ancestors are. First and foremost, you probably know some ancestors, but maybe because the family has judged them, you are apprehensive about working with that specific ancestor. Now, in my tradition, we do believe that you should not venerate or ask for assistance from a, mane a, bene a sorry, malevolent or a ancestor that didn't really live the best of lives. However, there are some people that really they were black sheep in the family and maybe you need to connect with that person because they understand what you might be going through and be able to help you heal and get you to your purpose. So this idea that if our ancestors weren't, you know, great grandmama that used to have popsicles and pies and used to kiss us on our cheek every Friday is is the ancestor that you think you might be working with. You would be surprised. It might be the cousin that you thought hated you. So we can't judge, reach out again and try to see what you can do to connect maybe with some extended family to get one name. All you need is one ancestor name, one ancestor. It doesn't even have to be an immediate. It could be your auntie's great, great grandmother on her husband's side. Doesn't matter. OK, you just need somebody to connect with on the other side. Now, finally, this is the most complicated uh, part of the process. I am adopted. 
and I have no way of connecting with my bloodline. I've reached out. I've tried to reach my biological parents. There's no way I can do that. I'm going to tell you that your adopted uh, parents, deceased ancestors care about you because they know what their descendant had to go through to be able to get a child that they love. So if you don't think that those ancestors are equally invested in you being able to get to your purpose, you are mistaken. So your adopted family's ancestors, you can be able to look to them as well. This can kind of be creepy if you have a new budding uh, friendship. However, if you have a very, very close friendship, there are some friendships that are so close that they're almost like brother and sister. Have a conversation with them. Most of the time, if you're that close, they understand your tradition. Talk to them. Can we venerate this ancestor together? Have that conversation with your friend. It is totally okay. You can also get uh, put a ancestor altar together for people that you admire. Maybe Maya Angelou is someone that really inspired you or you have a deceased dan- a dancer or deceased musician that really touches you in a way that you uh, that's on a whole nother level. Set up an altar to them. Have a conversation. Open yourself up to creativity they have a bird's eye view and there is no uh, benevolent spirit up there that is not going to come to your assistance and you will be so surprised about how those other ancestors will lead you to the family that you wanted to connect with so you can try any one of these tactics to be able to connect with your ancestor also a altar of trinkets maybe you're at the store and you're getting uh you see a necklace or something you know all you need is a glass of water a white candle a white tablecloth and something okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about how you can set up an altar in a couple of days i'll talk about what you could put on your ancestor altar the difference between an ancestor altar and a bovida So we'll have some conversations about that in the next couple of videos. But connecting with your ancestors is so important. So I'm just going to do this quick little series, post videos every couple of days so we can all make sure that we're connecting with our ancestors. You guys have a blessed day. Asheo.